Hi, this screencast is uh, to explain how to use the Divide Images script for archiving photos in GIMP. So first, ignore this terminal bar up here. This is the, uh, the thing that's allowing me to take this screencast. So first, you should install GIMP Photo Manipulation Tool. And I'm running Linux, uh, but Windows, it works on Windows as well as Linux. And um, so the first thing we've done is we've installed GIMP. You should also have installed the two archiving scripts and the DSKU plugin that were mentioned in the previous video on SheetGeek.org. And you can download these scripts from SheetGeek.org. Now, once we have actually downloaded those videos, um, let's take a look at, or downloaded those scripts, let's take a look at what they're used for. So, originally, I have previously scanned some family photos. And I have three separate photos here. And I've scanned hundreds or thousands of images like this. And what I want to do is separate them into each their own photo. Um, and so the easiest way to do that, well, you could open it up and open this and highlight it and copy it and create a new document and paste it with the correct sizes and whatnot. Um, but I wanted to kind of automate this. So what my plan is, is to uh, have a script that will run and automatically open these as their own image, cut these out here basically, um, and then save them as their own images. Now I had found a script online that does this already. However, I modified it specifically for being used with um, photo archiving. So uh, the first thing we want to do is open this image in GIMP. So you can right click, open with GIMP, and it will load this image in the GIMP uh, window here. And I'm going to make this window slightly larger so we can really get a uh, a little bit of a margin around it. So the first thing we need to do is you can see there's this white background. It's actually off-white. Um, what we want to do is make that perfectly white. So we take the rectangle tool from the toolbox here in GIMP or you can just hit the R button on your keypad and starting a little bit above the picture and a little bit below the picture we're going to draw a rectangle. Uh, in between some images here. So we're going to draw this to separate these two images basically. And we click delete and you can see there's a big difference between the white stripe in the middle and the off-white color here on the side. That's important because whenever we use the script it's going to look for a specific area that should be white and it's going to take a, a, a slight variation on white um, like a, a tolerance and select all of the pixels in this entire image that are within that threshold close to white and that's how it's going to actually separate each one of these images so what we need to do is make sure that all of these areas that are not part of a picture are actually white so we're going to highlight them and again notice that I'm overshooting a little bit on the margins here so you want to make sure that it actually separates these images completely Oops, try that again. Hit delete. And down here, we'll hit delete. And even here on the side, we're going to delete that because if we have two pictures we want to combine side by side, uh, such as the front of this image and the back of this image, we want to make sure that we have uh, no space in between. So uh, once we've done that, now we can actually run our script. So we'll go to Filters, Archiving, Atoms Divide Scanned Images. And I don't want to take credit for this, uh, this script. I actually found a script that does almost exactly what we needed here, but I modified it just slightly to make it more useful for archiving purposes. Um, so, but the first thing we need to do is uh, look at the options. So the options here say there's a selection threshold. So this is the tolerance of what it's going to accept that is close to but not quite a white pixel. And I say white pixel because it's actually going to take a sample. And so it says background sample corner. 
This is defaulting to bottom right because when I scan images, this bottom right area is always empty. So as long as I've deleted all of the pixel data there by highlighting it and hitting the delete button, um, that will always be white. And in fact, it's actually a, a slight offset. It's five pixels from the left, or sorry, five pixels left of the margin and five pixels up of the bottom margin. Um, that's what this offset area is for. Um, once it actually selects these images, you'll be able to see each one of these uh, images being automatically highlighted. It should open each one of these as their own image and then run dskew if you've installed that um, on each one of the images. And that's just going to straighten the images up. Sometimes dskew will misinterpret a, an edge for an image edge. And so that's another reason we want to clean this side up really well, is to make sure that the entire image can be tilted left and right, uh, or rotated, so that it will straighten. Um, we're also going to have this to automatically save our extracted images and close them. And when it saves it, we're going to select which directory we want. I'm going to do it on the desktop so you can watch them pop up right here. And save file type. Now for archiving, you generally want to use TIFF file type, however, uh, or at least 300 DPI to 600 DPI TIFF. But for this screencast, to, to make it faster, I'm just using a JPEG. Um, and so now it's going to start, uh, each one of these is going to be saved, but they need a name. The file needs a name. So it's going to start with image, and I'm going to use this number here. Uh, it says save file start number. This is the first image will be saved with with the name of image 000 whatever's in this box. So if you've already scanned like four images and you have 0000, 0001, 2, 3, 4, the next one you want should start on 5 so you don't overwrite the other images. And this will overwrite the images without asking you whether or not you want it to. So you must be careful not to overwrite your images. This append to file name uh, section we're going to leave blank. However, if we were to have scanned the backs of these images and we wanted to s make sure the image and its back had a similar name, we would save this as like image 0005. The back might be image 0005 and then write the word back in this box. Um, but again, we're going to leave this empty for the fronts. So now I'm going to click OK and it's actually going to run the script and you will see each step along the way. So here it's going to use the fuzzy select tool, which is picking the white color. And you can see it has highlighted each one of these. Now, if something were to go wrong, this is the time to, to fix it. So you can click on the rectangle tool and highlight some section of the image. That will actually crash the plugin, which is good if you need it to stop. Because if you're using a large file, like a TIFF image, um, and uh, something goes wrong, you don't want to wait for the entire thing to process. So uh, that's just a handy trick. That's the only time you can stop it is while it's in that phase. Um, but otherwise, I'm going to just open it up and run it again. We have GIMP fuzzy select tool. It will select each one of these images separately. And then it will do selection to path. And again, that's the time to cancel if you need to cancel for some reason or another. Uh, sometimes you might notice that you didn't get, for instance, this little area over here. And so you might want to fix that. Or maybe you left a small area connecting these two images, and so they will be one image in the end. So you might want to fix that. So here you can see it's opened the first one. It de-skewed it, which means it rotated it to try to straighten the image, and it saved it as image 05. And this is another, the second one is being automatically de-skewed. You can see it tilted it uh, counterclockwise slightly. And this last one will be tilted counterclockwise slightly again. And automatically saved. And at that point, we are done.